Hi there, I'm Nathan. From May 21st through August 7th of 2022, I was a university intern here at Silver Dollar City in Branson, Missouri. During my time there, I was an attractions intern at Time Traveler, the world's fastest, steepest, and tallest spinning roller coaster. I never rode it, and I personally don't like heights. But now that I'm back at college and finished with my program, I've got some thoughts about the whole thing. Now, I get it. You're still a busy college student. And don't worry, I completely understand it. I finished the script for this video back in August. So, if you've got some more important things to do and want to come back to this later, here's the TLDR so you can get back to that. The program's pretty good. It's not perfect, but it's definitely off to a great start. Alright, now, go. Get, get moving, get moving. For everybody else, I've got one major disclaimer to make before we get into the nitty-gritty details of this program. Silver Dollar City has offered internships in the past, but this is the first time that they've offered them under one unified banner. In addition to that, this is the first time they ever offered the program like this, and they're working on refining it. So expect my di experiences to be slightly different than the ones that you might experience if you do this program in the future. But with that out of the way, let's make like the 1880s frontier town that Silver Dollar City is based on, and take a look at the good. The meh and the ugly. Yeah, this this worked a lot better in my head. Of what this program has to offer. But first, before we get into that, we gotta answer one kind of important question. Part one. Wait a second. Where are we again? Welcome to Branson, Missouri. There's a theme park here. Now, if you've never been to Silver Dollar City before, it's pretty different from other theme parks in the United States. So I'm gonna explain it to the best of my abilities. Now, the analogy I'm going to use here may not make sense to about 85% of the people watching this video, and to be completely honest, I'm not even 100% sure if it's correct. But here we go. Silver Dollar City is the American version of a European theme park. Allow me to explain. First off, much like other European theme parks, Silver Dollar City was founded and based around a pre-existing attraction. While Efteling in the Netherlands has their gardens, and Alton Towers in the United Kingdom has their... Towers, Silver Dollar City has a big hole in the ground. It's a cave. Silver Dollar City originally started as a place that offered cave tours. Over the years, other attractions were added, and the park became what it is today. Those cave tours are still available, by the way. You can go and, like, take them now. Secondly, and more importantly, Silver Dollar City strikes a unique balance between quality rides and immersive theming that isn't really seen in other parks in the United States. While places like Six Flags and Cedar Fair try to focus on top-of-the-line thrilling attractions, and places like Disney and Universal instead tend to focus on incredibly immersive theming, Silver Dollar City strikes an interesting balance between the two, one that's only really seen at parks across the pond in Europe. Third, and probably most uniquely, is that Silver Dollar City has hills. And I'm not saying that lightly. Silver Dollar City is located in the heart of the Ozarks, and as a result the park is incredibly hilly, tree-filled, and gives the entire place a much more cozy vibe. In fact, several of the rides even use the unique terrain in their ride layouts and making rides such as Time Traveler or Wildfire incredibly unique experiences that you can't find anywhere else, I think. I haven't ridden either one, so I can't say for sure. Those three unique elements make Silver Dollar City an incredibly unique park, one that you can't really find anywhere else in the United States. Well, unless you count Dollywood, but they're owned by the same company that owns Silver Dollar City, so I don't really know if that counts. Of course, that company also owns, like, the Harlem Globetrotters and the Chuggington DV series, so do with that information what you will. What was I talking about again? Oh, right, uh, the uniqueness. Each ride stands on its own is an incredibly thrilling experience, while the food, scenery, shows, and other attractions help to turn it the park into a place that the entire family will love. Naturally, a place like this would be pretty fun to work at, right? Part 1. The Good. Which I need to stop at, because I just got a nosebleed. Alright, let's start by talking about the good stuff at this internship, because believe me, there's a lot. For starters, Silver Dollar City offers classes, much like another top-of-the-level, extremely popular college program at a theme park. <coughs> but unlike that program, however, these classes aren't optional. They're emphasized. Not only were our management required to give us the time off of work to be able to attend these classes, but we were also paid for attending them. 
That's right, we were paid to learn. Additionally, these classes were designed to help us better understand every element of what makes Silver Dollar City work, from attractions to financing, HR to merchandising. We even got the opportunity to meet and talk with the president of Silver Dollar City himself, Brad Thomas. Secondly, the benefits for being an employee at Silver Dollar City are some of the best I've seen, even outside of the theme park industry. Silver Dollar City cares about their employees, and their benefits reflect that. From blackout dates for the parks being almost non-existent, to healthcare incentives designed specifically around the company, their employees, and how the park operates, to events and specific incentives designed to reward employees for doing good work and being a part of the team. Heck, even calling out sick is one of the easiest things I had to deal with and was never much of a challenge on the day or two that I did actually get sick. One of the best examples of this caring attitude is through their discounts. Since Branson is very much a tourist town, and Silver Dollar City is one of the ways that a lot of tourists come into Branson, Silver Dollar City employees get discounts to other things in Branson, from shows to food to merchandise to other activities that are just in the city often at little to no cost for the employee. This was super fantastic, since it gave myself and many of the other university interns the opportunity to explore and experience other things that Branson had to offer, often at little to no cost for any of us. Now, those are some pretty great benefits, but you're probably wondering now, the job, what's that like? Part two, the math. Now, these things aren't straight good or straight terrible, but a little bit of both, especially depending on your opinion. So, take these with a little bit more nuance and a little bit more salt. As an example of this, let's talk about your hours. Unlike other theme parks in the United States, Silver Dollar City's hours aren't as extensive, or in this case, long. Most weeks, the park is only open from about 9.30 till 6 or 7 p.m. And some weeks, the park isn't even open all seven days of the week. This has some interesting results when it comes to your hours. Since Silver Dollar City wants to make sure you have days off, you are basically guaranteed two days off every single week. However, on the days that you are working, since the workday is typically longer, you're typically working from park open till park close. Now, my work weeks typically capped out at about 40 hours, and that was pretty unanimous across the board for most of us interns. However, there was one exception. Moonlight Madness. Moonlight Madness is Silver Dollar City's annual summer event, where the park is open later. Open until about 10 o'clock on weekdays, and midnight on Fridays and Saturdays. Since hours are typically longer, about 10 to 15 hours depending on the day, management will try to break those up into split shifts to make it a little bit easier for employees. But this isn't always guaranteed. Despite that though, my hours weren't too much terrible over my usual for those two weeks, and the most hours any of us interns got during that was just slightly over 50. Overall, hours aren't too bad. You do get those days off, so it means you're not working six or seven days straight in a row. However, on the days that you are working, it can feel a little bit longer since you are working longer shifts. I didn't mind though. I was getting paid, and those hours definitely added up. Since I worked in a safety critical position, attractions, I got paid $13.25 an hour. Now, that might not seem like a lot of money, especially when compared to other theme parks, but that wasn't necessarily a bad thing. See, Silver Dollar City is located in the heart of Missouri, as opposed to a theme park located in a much more densely populated urban area that's one of the biggest tourist hotspots on the planet. <coughs> as a result, my cost of living was much lower in Branson than it was in that more urban area. So while I wasn't necessarily getting paid as much by the dollar, the amount of money I was making, and more importantly keeping because of my cost of living, was a lot higher, which was good. I needed the money. Also speaking of that money, let's talk a little bit about rent. When I first got accepted into my internship position, I was told that housing would be a quote, five minute walk away from the park and I immediately started getting PTSD flashbacks. Sadly, this statement would also prove to be false. The apartments were only actually four minutes. Now, I should mention, this section might be entirely irrelevant in the future because Brad Thomas has mentioned they're working on new housing. For those of us interns that chose to stay in Silver Dollar City housing, Silver Dollar City, 
put us in apartments typically used for out-of-state entertainment acts to stay at during their run of a show on the property. These were located just inside of Silver Dollar City property, and as a result, made getting to work a lot more convenient. Now, I don't know where the new set of housing that the president has announced are going to be, so this information could become irrelevant, as well as my rent, but keep this in mind so you have a baseline idea of what it might be like. The nice thing about these houses was that rent was only $40 a week. Now, they weren't some brand new fancy top of the line places with super nice gyms or whatever, but they were fully furnished, had kitchens, electrical outlets, Wi-Fi, and the like. So it was pretty nice. Also, if you do stay at these apartments or don't stay in the apartments at all and choose to find your own housing, make sure you bring a car. You will need it in Branson. Yo, shouldn't that say ugly? No, no it shouldn't, we'll get to that later. There were two major issues I had with my internships, and fortunately for me, they make a pretty great alliteration. They were communication and consistency. Now, let's talk about consistency first, or in this case, the lack thereof. Since there were a decent amount of us interns, we were all placed in different roles. While the majority of us were working in attractions, some of us worked in HR, merchandise, food and beverage, entertainment, or even the water park. But since our roles varied so dramatically, our leaders, and more importantly, the quality of our internships varied dramatically as well. Some interns, such as the two interns in merchandising, had more specific and clearly defined roles with more opportunities for career growth built into them. Whereas other roles, such as those of us in attraction, were essentially doing the same jobs as harder full-time employees. Even among the attractions intern, though, our roles were varied pretty dramatically. Some of us were placed in labor pool, which gave them more of an opportunity to work and get trained at different rides or work more closely with upper-level management. This stood in stark contrast to those of us who were placed in specific locations. Since we didn't have that flexibility, our opportunities for career growth and development were much more limited. Even when there were opportunities given for specific training, they didn't always end up working out. For instance, my area supervisor had initially planned to train me at the two coasters and some of the flat rides that he supervised. However, since I was always, almost always scheduled a time traveler, I rarely, if ever, got the chance to go and train or work at those other locations. In fact, after my first day of training at those flat rides, I never got the opportunity to go back and finish my training, and as a result, didn't end up working those flat rides at all for the entire rest of the summer. I think this lack of consistency among the program can be attributed to that other factor, communication. Because, honestly, there wasn't much. Hi there, we're gonna read this thing exactly from the script because I'm bad at memorizing things and I want to make sure I get this right because this is one of the big things. When I applied and got accepted, this happened in mid-March. After my interview, which involved actually talking with a person over the phone, I got sent an email with details scheduling my first aid appointment to work at get clearance, what housing would look like, and when my first day of training would be. And then nothing. For two months, while they would send me more emails, they didn't give me any new information, and none of them really shared any details about what my move-in process would look like, where I'd need to go for first aid, or where even in the park I would be working. As such, I wouldn't find any of this information out until I got cleared by first aid, which happened 24 hours before my first day of training. I wouldn't find out my location until halfway through that day, and I was never actually given a formal tour of the park, so I had to learn the park's layout on my own for the first week or so that I was working there. I wouldn't be surprised if many of those inconsistencies in our internship was due to this lack of communication. In past years, internships were individually run by the department you'd be interning under. As such, there wouldn't be a need to have that communication between departments to understand what each area was doing. Now that all of these internships were being brought together underneath one umbrella, nobody had realized just how apparent those differences were. And for those interns who needed to do certain things to get college credit for the program, the only way to do this was by attempting to break through that lack of communication. Now, back to that question from earlier. You know, the, shouldn't it be called ugly one? The answer to the question is no. It shouldn't be. And to answer that question, I need to ask one other question alongside it. Part 4. 
Is this right for me? Back at the beginning of this video, I made a disclaimer. This is the first time Silver Dollar City has done an internship program like this. They aren't veterans in the industry like the Disney College program is. And I know, it took me this long to mention them by name, but let's face it, you already knew that I was gonna compare these two at some point since the video began. You've been waiting for that to happen, don't you lie to me. So let's compare these two. And the simple comparison is Silver Dollar City's internship program is miles above what the Disney College program will ever be. And that's for one simple reason. Silver Dollar City designed this program with interns in mind first. While the execution may not have always seemed like that, Silver Dollar City was constantly working to improve this program. Even while we were there, Silver Dollar City was asking us for feedback about how the program was doing, what things were lacking in the program, and ways that they could improve it in the future. In fact, two of the program's interns even presented to upper level management about how we felt the programs were, and ways that it could be improved in the future. This is their first time doing something like this. They're nervous about it being successful, and they want it to truly be successful, because they want it to be a program that people are excited to do. At the end of the day, the university program wants to leave interns with a positive impact on their career, even if it doesn't necessarily mean that they stay with the company after their internship ends. While it may not be as well known or as popular as something like the Disney College program, I think it does a lot of things right, and they're actively working to make this program even better. There are a lot of great things on the horizon for Silver Dollar City, outside of just this internship program. Silver Dollar City is honestly a really great place to work, and I'd highly recommend it for anybody that wants to try an internship in the theme park industry. The park's well reputed, it's got some amazing people, some fun rides, and it's just a really great place to work. And hey, maybe you'll even see me there, because I got some comp tickets that I need to use before the season ends, and I still need to get around to riding Time Traveler. It'll happen. Eventually. Just, just not today. Okay, audio's recording again. We're gonna try this one more time. Three, two, one. I forgot, I forgot to put up the towel when I was filming this. Uh, pretend that's been there for this entire video, okay? Frick, all right, let's try this. Now that that's out of, um, this is gonna be absolutely terrible. All of this is gonna get like cut. Anyways, hi there, uh, editing Nathan here. Yes, I am wearing another Silver Dollar City shirt. Yes, I am wearing a completely different flannel. I have a lot of flannels, don't worry about that. Also, apologies for the delay in making this video. This was supposed to come out earlier, like August, September. Um, unfortunately, being in my last semester of college uh, means I got super busy with stuff like this. And stuff like this. And stuff like this. Uh, but in the meantime, thanks so much for sticking it out through the delays. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Um, thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking around and waiting for this thing to come out. And, um, yeah, that, that's really it. That's really all I've got. So, uh, see y'all. See you, see you in the next one, I guess. And, yeah. Woo!